So one of the big topics here in the last few months is this rising market share that we have on desktop Linux. We're seeing a real explosion in the number of users that are actually using Linux as their primary desktop operating system. And people want to know, you know, what is the ceiling? You know, could we eventually have 60, 70, 80 percent of the desktop OS market share? Could we overtake Windows one day? And I've got to be honest, I don't think that is remotely possible because I don't think you know, a lot of people think the reason that Linux lags behind Microsoft Windows or Mac OS is because our operating system is inferior in some way, that it lacks some features that Windows has or that Mac OS has. And once we have all the features there, you know, once we have feature parity with Windows or Mac OS, Linux will all of a sudden just be the most popular operating system on the planet. Well, guess what, guys? I've been using desktop Linux, you know, I've been using Linux as my primary operating system on all of my computers for 16 years. And I would say Linux is definitely in that 16 year period has been a better operating system than Windows ever was, or including the versions today, certainly the past versions. Linux was already the best operating system as far as what it could do, the power, the flexibility, the customization, of course, the licensing, the freedom behind it, right, with free and open source software. In my opinion, you know, Linux was always ahead. We were ahead in uh, privacy and security. So it's not necessarily that, you know, we lack anything as far as features, as far as technical specifications or anything like that. That's not why Linux lags behind Windows as far as market share. It is just that Windows is very monolithic in terms of it's the one operating system where Linux, when we talk about Linux operating systems, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of Linux distributions out there, right? And they're all doing their own thing where Windows is just the one operating system with one company, one trillion dollar company that is pushing the thing. And that's why it's a hit in market share. You know, I see people all the time online say things like, well, you know, I'm a Windows user and I've thought about switching to Linux, but it's just not ready. You know, once Linux has this feature, then I might switch to Linux. You hear that all the time. But here's the thing. In 2024, Linux is so damn good. Right. Like it's nearly the perfect operating system that you know, whatever you can imagine, Linux can probably do. And, you know, if you're sitting around saying things like, well, maybe I'll switch to Linux one day once it has this feature. Guess what? You're never going to switch to Linux. Right. That, that, you, you just just admit it that, you, you know, you don't want to use Linux. And that's fine if you don't want to use Linux or you're happy living on Windows or Mac OS. Nobody is trying to force you. At least I hope they're not trying to force you to use Linux as an operating system. And that's OK if you don't want to use Linux. Uh, honestly, if Windows is working for you, stick with it. If Mac OS is working for you, stick with it. But I do think we do have a ceiling as far as market share. Right now, we're probably at about 4% of desktop OS market share. How high can we go? Could we get potentially to 10%? Maybe. But I think past that, is again, it's going to be tough because there is a large percentage of the population that is just never going to try Linux. They're not interested what operating system they run. They really don't care. They're, you know, it's one of those things, the people that, choose to run Linux, we really care about things like privacy, security, and freedom, and things like that. But most computer users, just most people in general, just don't care about any of that. So, of course, they're not interested in switching operating systems. That's not even a possibility. And it's not really like we need to gain any features. Because I remember like 10 years ago, you know, the one thing that's keeping me from running Linux is Linux doesn't have gaming. And then once Steam on Linux was a thing, and we saw a little bit of an increase in market share, but just a little, right? <laughs> so all those people that said gaming was the one thing holding them back from switching from Windows to Linux, well, guess what? Most of those people still didn't give Linux a try, even if after we had gaming. And, you know, well, I'd come to Linux after Linux, you know, has a, a port of this particular software. Maybe it's Microsoft Office. Maybe it's the Adobe Creative Suite, whatever. You know, as more and more things, though, move to the cloud, as more and more things become web applications, basically you can run it in a browser on any operating system, you know, then we have less people 
that have that as an excuse. As far as I would run Linux, except it doesn't run this one piece of software that I have to have. You know, as again, that's not as big of an issue as it was, say, 10, 15 years ago. But still, you know, even though that's the case, still a lot of those people that make that claim that, hey, I switched to Linux if it had this piece of software with even when Linux finally has that piece of software, they still don't come. Right? They still don't switch to Linux. So I do think, you know, again, there is a ceiling and that's OK. You know, at some point we have to realize those of us that are enthusiasts as far as free and open source software and especially the GNU slash Linux operating system, you know, we, we can only take this thing so far because unfortunately there is just a large percentage of the population out there that just don't care. Anyway, just some food for thought. Peace guys.